Hey y'all, Organizing Hire, welcome or welcome back. I did a video a couple of videos ago where I talked about an app that I use called Obsidian. Uh, Obsidian is a basically a note-taking app, although you could do a lot of other things with it. I'm gonna call it a note-taking app. Uh, basic text files, you can use Markdown format for it. And it's pretty popular these days and I'm using it in lieu of OneNote, which is what I used to use. So I already talked about in another video how the project title that I have in Todoist matches the project title in Obsidian. And that's important because anytime that I need to go into Obsidian to reference project support, next action support, um, or reference materials, I know what it's called um, in order to find it in Obsidian pretty quickly. So the example that I'm gonna use is about a process that I use, a project that I have um, that occurs pretty regularly, which is a hearing coordination. So the good thing about this project is it's relatively complex. Um, it's not complicated though. So it's complex because there's a lot of pieces associated with it. There's a lot of timelines um, and, and very specific ways that things need to be sent out and to whom and all of that stuff. But that actually makes it a little bit easier for me because I'm able to use Obsidian to not have to remember what that process is every time that I have to do a hearing. So I will say, one of the things that I love most about Obsidian, I love a lot of things about Obsidian, but one of the things that I love most about Obsidian and what makes it most powerful for me is the ability to link different notes to each other. And that ends up being really, really crucial to the system that I have set up in a city in Obsidian. I also love the ability to use the community plugins. The community plugins essentially take an awesome tool and just elevate it to the next level, which seems impossible, but it totally does. There are tons of community plugins. Um, the one that I use most often is the Templater plugin. That helps me with templates, particularly as I'm making templates and, and using them to recreate this project, this reoccurring project, without having to completely start from scratch. So when I have a hearing that I need to coordinate in Todoist, I will create a project called, you know, coordinate hearing for whoever the people are that are involved. And then the very first next action that I have is essentially, you know, set up um, Obsidian page. That's the very first thing that I need to do. That's the next action for that. Because in Obsidian, that's where I'm going to be able to add all of my notes and all of that stuff and get all of my next actions. So the next action for me isn't to just dive in and start, you know, coordinating the hearing. It's to basically project plan. So that's always my next action when it comes to coordinating hearings. When I'm ready to complete that um, action of setting things up in Obsidian, I will go into Obsidian and I will essentially create a template. So I already have this template that's set up, this coordinate hearing template, and I have it populated with some basic information that I'm always gonna need for all of the hearings. So the date of the hearing, who the hearing officer is, the names of the people that are in the party, in, in the uh, hearing, what their roles are, their phone number, their email address, stuff that I reference pretty constantly that I don't wanna always have to look multiple places to go. Or I don't wanna have to go into my email and look to see like, oh, what's the email address that I sent that person? You know, What's their email address? Let me look at the last email that I sent to them. I don't wanna have to do that. Again, that slows me down. If I'm constantly referencing this page or this, these emails or these phone numbers, I just want to have everything all in one spot. Having the hearing date is also really important because, because all of the tasks that I need to do associated with coordinating the hearing um, really are dependent on the hearing date. So certain things need to happen, you know, X number of days before the hearing. And so I have um, in the template, I have certain uh, a section and underneath that section, you know, 10 days before the hearing, 15 days before the hearing, etc. it tells me what tasks that I need to do. I can also put the date, when is 10 days before the hearing, so that I'm not constantly having to ask myself that question and constantly look that up. The hearing date is not gonna change and 10 days before that date is not going to change. So to have to constantly relook that up is would be, it wastes time. So to have it here very specifically helps me stay on track it also helps me to know when I need to transfer things over into Todoist. So as part of my weekly review, I will review these, these items, I'll review these, this particular project, and I can see what's coming up next, what do I still need to do, what am I waiting on potentially from someone. Um, sometimes I need to get certain things back from people, so that's what I mean when I say I'm waiting on, on things for people from people. Also in here, I have a, a link to another set of templates, which is the templates of emails that I send. 
because this process is so regular and repetitive, there are specific things that I need to include in all of my email communications. So I literally just have a template set up for every single different type of email that I send. Now, some of the emails are more detailed than others, and some of them are literally just copy and paste, but I have little notes for myself. You know, I'll make something capitalized or put it in parentheses or bold or something if I need to fill in like, you know, replace name with the person's actual name or replace date with the actual date of the whatever the, the date is that I'm referencing. It's easy to, it makes it a lot easy for me to have this linked specifically in Obsidian because again, when I see a task in Todoist, like email the parties a notice of hearing that I know I can go into Obsidian and all of the support materials that I need in order to complete that particular action, I can get from Obsidian, or at least the direction of where to go, I can get from Obsidian. So if there are links to documents in our shared drive, which a lot of times that's where the documents are, I know exactly in the shared drive where to go to find that. If I need to send an email, I don't have to, again, go into my old sent folder and be like, where are the emails that I sent before? I just click on the link. It takes me to that page where I have the text for the email. I copy and paste it. I have the subject line. I know who I'm supposed to send it to. If I need to attach anything that's indicated there, and then the actual message or the body of the email is in there. So I still have to take the time to pay attention to, you know, make sure the date is accurate, make sure the names are accurate. I, I, it's um, it's really important that I'm, I'm highly accurate in a lot of this stuff. And so that's a large reason why I use the templates, because if I'm doing this from scratch, I'm going to forget something. So if I'm sending the same thing out over and over again, then it's going to be the same thing no matter what. Then I also have a basic space for notes. So this is something that's going to change from hearing to hearing. Sometimes it's little things um, that I just want to make the hearing officer aware of or stuff that's unique to that specific hearing. And that's always in the notes section. It's also really helpful for me to have like a, this kind of dashboard for this particular type of project because anytime that someone asks me the status of something or if I want to know what the status is of something I can just review this really quickly and get up to speed on stuff if things change if contact information changes um, there was a, there's been times where I've had a particular phone number for someone and when I call that number it ends up actually not being the, the correct phone number so I'm able to very quickly just delete and update information in here um, but I also get to sync everything everywhere. And that's the thing I love the most. It is a paid feature, Obsidian Sync, for me, completely worth it. Um, not unlike Todoist Premium, completely worth it considering how much value I get from it. With Obsidian Sync, I'm able to pretty seamlessly um, sync all of my devices, mobile apps, computer, on my phone, on my iPad, everything just syncs up really nicely. And I know there are other ways to sync for free. Totally fine if that works for you. For me, the, just paying for it is like, the simplest thing for me to do. Like I value my time more than I value the like $48 or whatever that I paid for Obsidian Sync. Plus it supports the, um, the, the people that make the app, the app makers, no. It supports the developers. I'm a huge fan of giving back to people that provide valuable content for free like that's so i mean it's so hard these days in this day and age to get something and nobody's asking you for anything in return right like when you come to my channel and you see these videos I mean, other than like maybe subscribing if you want to, I'm not asking you for your time outside of the video that you're watching. I'm not asking you for money. I'm not asking you for any of that stuff. And it's completely free. So anything that I can do to support someone who provides content to me for free, I'm all about that. So that's just a brief overview of how I'm using Obsidian to supplement my GTD practice. Like I said, it really helps me to move quickly from uh, task to task. When I have a particular action in Todoist, I know exactly where to go to get support for that particular action. And so let's say that after I have set up this particular project of, of coordinating the hearing, um, you know, that task is done in Todoist and I can check that one off um, and I can look at the checklist that I have in Obsidian and I can pull out whatever the next action or the next actions are, or I can um, acknowledge what those next actions are going to be and what the dates are associated with those things. So it really kind of puts this process on 
autopilot for me and something that could be overwhelming, particularly with the dates and how quickly some of the dates come up and how many pieces are associated with it. It makes the process super, super simple for me because I'm not constantly having to rethink what to do. So that's how I'm using Obsidian to supplement my GTD practice with Todoist and Outlook and all the other tools that I use. So definitely leave a comment below if you have questions or need clarification on anything. Um, or if you have ideas for other videos as well, definitely leave a comment below. Thanks so much for watching and have a great week.